Hey everyone, so we're uh, we're updating this really cool file renamer tool. It's very simple. We were debating which we have regex and they're not, and we realized let's just add a tooltip to it to help ex give a little information about what it is in case people don't know what it is. Um, so, and then is just going to do a demo here of how to add it. Simply add it to the GUI. Right. This so, is a V1 script, though, right? Just to, so people understand, this is what we borrowed from another script. Right. So here, as you can see, um, we have a control. The first thing that we're going to do is that we're going to capture the message of whether the mouse is moving or not. Right. And once, the, as the mouse is moving, what I'm going to be checking is whether the control under the mouse is one that I care about. And if it is, we're going to show a tooltip. If we don't, then we don't show the tooltip. That's all there is to it. And sometimes it might be confusing at first, but once you get the idea of how that works, it's going to be very simple to add. So let's open the code here. Um, the first thing is that we want an on message. I think I have that. And the message number that we're going to capture, if you don't know how to get those um, on the documentation, you can, oh, well, this is V1, right? So um, message list. So these are the window messages that we can capture. And the one that I'm looking for, I can use control F to look for mouse move. This is the message that I want to use. In general, there is a better message to capture, but let's go with mouse move because it's simpler. So what I'm going to do is this is the message that, that I'm going to be capturing. And the function name that I'm going to use, just because I, uh, this is not the one, though. Hold on. Right. Be careful. There's one that it says WM, window message, NC, mouse move. That's not the one that I want. I want the other one, the mouse move by itself. W message, so window message, mouse move. This is the one. So um, this is the one that I care about. Is how come the one above it is the same message? Yeah, so um, that is kind of like it's many okay. times you will find <laughs> variables that that are kind of like older names and they renamed them. Oh, I, okay. Use the other one. Yeah, all right. All. all right. Now I just name my function the name of the message, so I don't have to have a a, a variable for that. And that way, I know what that message is. It's just the mouse move. Now we just define the function. Um, and of course, when you are doing functions like this, um, you will look at the on message function and there is a callback is what it's called. Um, the callback, hold on, let's look at it. The callback function gets four parameters. And the four parameters that it gets is The L param, the W param, those are very specific. What message we received, we're going to go ahead and use that for certain purposes. And the handle. Now, this handle here depends on the message. Many times, in general, is the unique window or control that sent the message. Sometimes, some messages like mouse move return the control handle. And sometimes it gives you the parent window handle. So that's what we're going to test right now. If it is what I care about, what I'm going to do is mouse get position. We're going to get the, I don't care about the X. I don't care about the Y. Now, this is not what I want. I want the control. Now the control. So this is control handle HWMD. That's what I'm going to get. And mouse get position tells me that it usually gives me the name, like the class of the control, but I don't want the class. I want the handle. So I'm going to use number two. So I'm going to use number two here. So with testing, what I'm going to do is just tooltip. And I'm going to test the control handle that is under the mouse. And I want to compare it, this V1, to the handle that the mouse move command is giving me. And at some point, if they are the same, I'm going to perform the action that I care about. So let's do this. Um, let's rerun it. 
And now you see that both of them are kind of like running around. And I hope that those two numbers are, are the same. That's what I'm looking for. If not, then I will have an issue. Now, it seems to me that they will be. Let me see. I can not ask you. Is ASCII something that I can use to convert that into format this guy? Sorry, no. To format that as a decimal number, I guess. This here, that should do a nice conversion. All right, all right, all right, all right. There you go. So. That means that if the handle, so, so what the mouse move handle is giving me is the control handle. So at this point, what I want to do is that regex GUI item. So let's see where the GUI is created. Um, let's just open up the folder instead. Where the GUI is located, you can get the regex. Where's the regex? Here it is. One of the things that you can save when you create a control is the handle. You can save the HWND, um, CBRE, HWND. So I can do that. So this, in general, gives me a variable that contains the handle of that when it was created. So let's just get that. And now our function just has to compare the two. So I don't have to use it from the mouse. I have it here. When we create that, that makes a global variable. Let's make this global just in case. Let's reload it. And let's see if we get, you see? So now the control that I got when I created it, I saved the handle of it when I created it. And as you can see, when the, when the mouse move returns it, 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 they are the same. Now that I have that, now I'm going to do my tooltip inside the condition, whether this equals to that. And now I'm going to put my tooltip here regular expressions um, allow or use regular expressions in the search and for example now this would automatically um, let's see oh see. That should have been the same. Hold on. Is that not true? Is that never true? Oh, that's interesting. <laughs> Hold on. Let me, let me do this real quick. They should be true at some point. Then. Right. Oh, right. Sorry. You know why? Because I have to convert this. And because auto hotkey B1 is annoying, that's why. <clears throat> there it is. So just know that if you're using an if statement or an expression there, your life is going to be easier. The thing is that it was comparing that to the string H, W, and D, right? So <laughs> it was so annoying. But now that you have that, if you are on top of that, it's going to show this tooltip. If it is not outside of it, then I just remove the tooltip. And this would do it in a way that once I'm there, oh, again, let's just format it. Why is it doing that? Hold on. And it did do that. Oh, because I have to return. Yeah, that's why it was doing it too fast. Oh. So once you do this, you have to return here. 
so as to not remove it because it's removing it. See? Yeah, there you go. So now when, when the mouse is on top of that control, it shows the tooltip. If it is not on that control, it removes the tooltip. And that's how you basically do this. It, um, the idea is pretty simple. You capture where the mouse is moving or not, and then you compare whether the handle is on top of the control that you care about. Then you show the tooltip. And just make sure you return so that it doesn't remove it. Um, the, in AutoHotKey V2, or in this one, I can also do it. What I do is that I use a switch statement. So I use a switch statement on the handle. And the case is um, the one that I care about. So that's this guy. Oops. And when you do it this way, you don't have to return any longer because the switch statement makes sure that it only executes that when it is true. Let me see if that I have to force an expression there. No, there you go. That way, I usually for functions like this that are callbacks to a message, I do a switch either on the message or in what I care about, which is the handle in this case. And when the handle is this one, I show the tooltip. When the handle is not that one, just show that the, destroy the tooltip and that's it. So I hope that brings awesome. an idea of what how to do this very quickly. So let, let me summarize here. Um, one of the important things we just learned is that the term simple is very relative depending on who you are. Because <laughs> that's simple for Isaiah's, but for me, that would have taken me hours. And this is one of those things also, like this would be a great topic. We would have helped someone in the hero group. And this is why if you join the hero group, you know, we can we can help, you know, add some amazing functionality to your scripts that don't have to take you hours upon hours, or even whether it's even done or you learn the concepts, right? So this is one of the things that we will probably cover this Friday in one of the hero calls, because I think it's a great little tip. No. But uh, I hope you like that video. Talk later.